Previously, I had promised myself no more headphone reviews. I'm going to break that promise. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. The reason I don't enjoy making headphone reviews anymore is because frankly, there's not that much innovation out there. Think of the main brands we normally discuss, AKG, Audio-Technica, Sennheiser, Bayer Dynamic, Sony, and then think about the models we normally normally associate with studio headphones. Well, I either own or have at least tried most of those models. And to be honest, I just don't feel that excited about them anymore, nor do I feel I can add to the conversation. And where I have seen some true innovation, it's been with some really expensive headphones, which are way outside most of your budgets. So, why am I making an exception for these Adam Audio H200 headphones? Well, partly because they are made by Adam Audio, the same people who make my studio monitors, the A7Vs, which I really love, by the way. So I was slightly intrigued to see if the quality I had known from those monitors had in any way trickled down through to these pretty inexpensive headphones. Now, when I say inexpensive, when these are released, and I believe that's next month they're going to be around about 149 us dollars that's definitely towards the lower end of pricing for studio headphones not the cheapest but towards the lower end but those two things alone probably wouldn't be enough for me to break my promise but when i started to read about these headphones there are a couple of features that really stood out to me as pretty unusual especially for headphones in this price range which is why I decided to tell you guys about them. These are closed back headphones. Now I would normally suggest for closed back headphones in the studio, sound quality isn't actually the most important feature. Now, why would I say such a ludicrous thing? Well, we've got to think about their purpose. In the studio, we wouldn't normally use closed back headphones for mixing. We would use open back headphones. And in that case, sound quality is super important because we're making important mix decisions. Instead, with these headphones, we would mostly be using them for tracking or recording. Situations where we're wearing them and we've got a microphone in front of us. In those occasions, there are much more important factors at play. For example, sound isolation. We wanna make sure that not too much of the backing track or the click track is bleeding from the headphones into the microphones, especially click tracks they can be really difficult to get rid of later. And I'm pleased to say that with these headphones, the sound isolation is really excellent. Now under normal circumstances, when I'm talking about this, I would suggest the Sennheiser 280 Pros. They've got excellent sound isolation. However, they're super, super uncomfortable. And that brings us to another really important consideration for tracking with closed back headphones. We need them to be comfortable. We're gonna be wearing them for extended periods of time. And if you feel discomfort, that could really affect your performance. So these are actually very, very comfortable. Let's talk about that. So there's three or four main things that add to the comfort. First of all, they're super light. I don't know how much they actually weigh. I guess you can look at the specs for that. But I can tell you just from experience, these are some of the lighter headphones that I've actually worn. Also, they're well supported. They've got these easy adjustments on the side where they just sort of move in and out of the headband there very easily. And that means that when you adjust them to your head, the top of your head is gonna be making contact with this really soft padding that we can see on the inside of the headband there. And finally, really significantly, the actual ear pads themselves. Now, these are made of a kind of a faux leather, which is gonna become super important, actually, when we do talk about sound later on, so keep that in mind. Um, but they've got this sort of memory foam to them, which sort of squishes in and out really nicely. And when you put these on your head, if you've got average size ears like me, then they cover your whole ear. And the clamping force 
is strong enough so you get that really good isolation I was talking about without being overly strong so that you feel like your head's being crushed or something. <laughs> While we're on the subject of padding, I just want to point out that both the headband padding and the ear pads are easily replaceable. And that can be important with headphones like this because over years when you wear them a lot, those components do tend to degrade. And whilst that's not enough for me to break my promise, it is worth mentioning because not all headphones in this price bracket have that feature. But not only that, with the ear pads, you can swap out these faux leather ones for fabric ones. Now I'm teasing you a bit here because this does become important later on when we talk about the sound character. Now before we do talk about sound quality, I just wanna talk about the cabling. With the headphones, you do get a detachable three meter straight cable, but they say on their website that alternatively you can get hold of a shorter one and a half meter straight cable or a coiled cable if you prefer. But I think they've made the best choice in terms of popularity to include with the headphones. Now this uses a sort of a push in mechanism to connect to the headphones. Now I wanna talk about this a little bit. Firstly, with some other headphones in this price range, you don't even get a detachable cable, which means you're just stuck with whatever cable they attach to it, which is not great. Now, a lot of the time when you're using this push-in mechanism, however, they easily slip out. You tread on the cable and it pops out and it's super annoying. So what some other manufacturers have done have used like, say, a screw-in mechanism, which holds them on really, really firmly, or a bayonet mechanism as well, which also holds them in really firmly. Now, I wanna tell you a story. Just a few days ago, with one of my $700 pair of headphones, which uses a screw-in mechanism, I trod on the headphone cable and actually sort of moved rather violently, I would say. And the result was it ripped the whole cup off of the side of the headphones and actually rendered them useless and irreparable, which was disappointing. So I'm no longer a fan of the screw-in type cables, but there is a problem with the push-in ones normally uh, because they easily come out. Well, Adam have thought that through and they've got this kind of a mechanism where there's this sort of notch or a collar on the connection. When it pushes in, it goes in and holds really, really firm. But if you exert enough force on it, and that's quite a lot of force, it does eventually pop out, saving potentially your cable and the ear cups as well, which is rather nice. Now, one of the other things which is really nice about this connection, and I haven't seen this on any of the other studio headphones I've got, is you can connect this to either side of the headphone. So this is not a wire connection, it's a single connection, but you connect it either to the right or the left side, doesn't make any difference. And that's really super useful. Sometimes if you've got you know, your headphone connection to your right hand side it can be super annoying when it's going, sort of going across your face to the left or, or what have you. So really well thought through actually, and I appreciate it. Now I should point out at this point that this video is not being sponsored by Adam Audio. They're not paying me in any way, nor are they telling me what to say as if they could. However, this video is being sponsored by DistroKid, who don't care what I say about these headphones, but if you follow their VIP link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off of your first year of membership. I was watching another YouTuber talk about these headphones and he was saying what a thumping bass they have. <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. I thought he must have been using different headphones to me because I would never say that these have got a thumping bass sound, nor would I want them to have that characteristic because as you probably know, for studio headphones, we don't want any part of the frequency response to be too hyped, not like consumer headphones. Added to that, Adam say that they've modeled the sound of these headphones 
on the sound of their flagship monitors, the S3Vs. Now, I haven't heard the S3Vs, so I can't tell you whether they sound similar to them or not. But if they do in any way, then I would also hope that they don't have a hyped bass or a hyped high end or anything like that. Because for studio monitors and for studio headphones, we normally want them to be relatively flat. There's no such thing as a completely flat response, but relatively flat so that we can make good decisions. But why am I waffling on about this when I said earlier on that for closed back headphones, we don't need to care about that? Well, that's one of the areas where it gets really interesting with these headphones. So these headphones actually come with some software. In actual fact, a plugin which you use probably on the master bus of your door. And that plugin changes the sound of these headphones. Now there's a few different ways in which it changes the sound, but I want to focus in on a couple of the most interesting ones to me at least. Now you remember earlier on I said that the ear pads, which by default are this faux leather, can be swapped out for cloth ones. Well, if you did that of course, it would change the sound of the headphones. You've got just different physical characteristics going on there. Well they've actually accounted for that in this plugin. There's a switch you can switch for if you've decided to use cloth ear pads. Now that is attention to detail and I'm a little bit impressed by that I must say. Now the other thing which I think is really interesting is they've tried to address a problem uh, with mixing with headphones which you don't get when you're using monitors. So when you're using monitors or speakers you actually hear a little bit of the right channel with your left ear and a little bit of the left channel with your right ear. And there's this thing called crossfeed. Whereas with headphones, it's quite different. You just get all of the right in your right ear and all of the left in your left ear. And it's a little bit more unnatural. So the experience of mixing between the two is really quite different. So they've got a feature within this software to deal with that, where they kind of mimic the crossfeed that you would get if you're using monitor speakers. And that really changes the experience of mixing with headphones. And that's where I find these closed back headphones in this context really interesting especially for those of you who are just starting out with your studio. Okay, so ideally, you would have one pair of headphones for mixing and another pair of headphones for tracking, some open backs and some closed backs. But if you're just starting out with your studio gear, that can really break the budget. So you're gonna to have to make a sacrifice if you've got open back headphones, they're not going to be great for tracking. And if you buy headphones good for tracking, they're not going to be that great for mixing. And that's where I think these are really interesting. I would say primarily they're good for tracking. However, with the software they supply and the flatness of the response and their comfort level, I think these could be used at least potentially for some mixing as well. So. I would recommend if you're just starting out and you're only buying one pair of headphones, that these would definitely be on your consideration list because of all of those reasons. I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Mike. I hope you're well, and I'll see you in the next video.